Thanks for tuning in to the Joined Up Writing Podcast, a weekly show featuring interviews with fantastic authors sharing their personal stories on how and why they write. There's hints and tips for aspiring writers and great book reviews from top bloggers. Follow us on Twitter at JU Podcast. Right, cue the cheesy theme tune. Put down your pen and stop your typing. Grab yourself a drink because it's joined up writing. The epilogue. Yes, welcome to the epilogue, another of the quick episodes we've run between our longer shows, featuring a bonus question not included in last week's main author interview. So following on from a main interview last week, Melanie McGrath hung around for an extra question. If you missed the main interview, be sure to go and have a listen, but Melanie writes everything from non-fiction and memoir to crime and mystery. Her latest book is psychological thriller called Give Me the Child, and is available now, published by HarperCollins. So for the bonus round, I asked Melanie about her experience in teaching creative writing. Melanie McGrath, thanks very much for staying around for the epilogue. Um, and I just wanted to ask you, we mentioned in our main interview, um, you talked a little bit about the fact that you've taught creative writing and also the fact that you think it's such an important thing anyway and that you wished there'd been more creative writing courses and things around uh, when you were starting out. So as a teacher, I know you've taught at Arvon and other places, um, what are some of the kind of most common questions you get asked or what are the most common mistakes you see in beginners? Um, I think the most common question I get asked is, why isn't it easier? <laughs> <laughs> it isn't easy. It's hard writing a book. Um, and if you're finding it easy, it's probably because you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess the, the, uh, the people, what people struggle with most is structure over and over again and um, how much to plan and whether to plan and how to plan. And what tends to happen is people get um, people start writing before they've properly thought things out. And whether you plan formally or not, whether you actually plan on a page or um, on a spreadsheet or whatever, um, you half of writing, at least half of writing, is actually thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, so people have an idea and they get, carried away by their idea and they write they start writing too quickly and they get to chapter four and it all falls apart and they don't know how to so they think oh well that was obviously a bad idea but this idea is a really good one um so you find people over and over again who've got who've got kind of 10 chapter fours in a drawer somewhere but have never quite been able to get beyond that you can't break the cycle yeah i think um Ideas, you need to really uh, think about your idea. You really need to stand it up. You really need to work on who your characters are before you even set pen to paper. And even if that's only in your head, you have to kind of know them in your head. I mean, as far as characters are concerned, I always, I always say it's like, it's like seeing um, figures walking out of a mist. You know, when, when they first come to you, you can't even tell the mist is so they're so far away and the mist is so uh, s- strong that you can't even see whether they're male or female. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the more you think about them, the more you work on them, the closer to you they become. Um, and you gradually get to see their outlines and then the outlines become details. And, and so it goes on. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, that's a process very much of, Think active thinking rather than writing. If you start writing too early, you're going to run out of steam. So do you kind of give them kind of a set structure or like a, an idea of a kind of a skeleton structure? What what's, what sort of um, things do you tend to work from? Are there specific books or specific people that you tend to go to in terms of structure? Where, where did you kind of pick up a lot of that stuff? Um, well, when I teach... Um, I, th- I think it's helpful to write, to read around. Um, a book that I often recommend is Stephen King's memoir on writing, mm-hmm. just half about the craft and half about um, uh, how he became a writer. And I think both parts are equally useful. But um, he's got lots of great tips about giving your character stakes, so making sure it matters what happens to them um, and it matters to the reader. 
Um, another book that I've always found useful, a much more of a crafty book, is um, a book called Writing the Breakthrough Novel, and it's by, uh, I think he's a literary agent called Donald Mars, American, M-A-A-S, and it also comes with a workbook, and uh, that forces you to do things like write a shoutline for your book before you even start. So mm -hmm. you have to be able to describe your book in one sentence. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you can't, then it's because you haven't you Thought haven't seen it, it mm. in its most clear, sort of stripped down form. But as far as sort of starting a structure, I always start with the question, "What if?" Mm -hmm. um, because uh, it, all stories are about characters that are put in a scenario, and then you make things difficult for them, and they see and you see how they get out of their difficulties. Um, and um, the the question, what if something happens, and then what if that makes something else happen, gives you what um, I would call a causal chain. So mm -hmm. stories are not just a series of random events. That's just a series of random events. Stories are things that happen that cause other things to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you ask that question, it's a way of creating a chain of causal events that you can um, see unfolding, you know, one thing causing another thing. And that's what we call a story. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it comes from. It's funny you mentioned the thing about the shout line and being able to break it down. The book that I often use that it's, it's actually a screenwriting book, but it's Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it's a, it does talk about a lot of the similar thing. I mean, they call it a log line, obviously, in screenwriting, but it's the similar kind of thing. You, you, you start it from there and you kind of extrapolate it out. You know, as you say, you need to be able to sum it up into that that uh you know one or two sentence the elevator pitch sometimes that people call it but, yes yeah. um uh, and uh, but i find the screenwriting books are actually quite useful for um i know that novels don't strictly adhere to or not all novels strictly adhere to kind of screenwriting um structure but it is very very similar in terms of the beats that you need to hit and the kind of overall shape of the story and it's quite a useful way to think about it yeah i mean I'm, i live with a screenwriter so um yeah uh, I've picked up a lot about structure from him and I'm, I'm looking, as you were talking, I was looking at my, I'm sitting in my office and I was looking at my um, bookshelves and I've got Sid Field, I've got Robert McKee, I've yeah. got um, York, can't remember, John York. John York, it? yeah, story. story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I have read all of those, um, Joseph Campbell, um, but I think, uh, those only take you so far. And if you think there's a kind of formula, then you're going to write something formulaic. Absolutely, yeah. And again, I teach the eight-point arc a lot, which yeah. uh, if you're interested in, you can go and Google it and, and you'll see a lot about it. But I think that's something that you use to kind of, you get lost in your story. You can go back and look and see if you're in an eight-point arc and where in the arc you might be, and that might that can help you sometimes get out of your um, befuddlement. But if you just started with an eight-point arc and just wrote an eight-point arc, then you'd end up with something really formulaic. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, I mean, people do, and those books and, and um, uh, films and so on get watched and they reach an audience. But for me, that that's not much of a challenge, really. It's not much fun to write either, really, because you're just going through the motions. It's almost like painting by numbers, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, you know, again, I think there are readers who get a kick out of that. I mean, they, you know, they can see what you're doing. They can, But for me, what, um, what I'm really interested in is sort of playing more of a game with a, with a reader. So, uh, you know, I like surprising a reader. I like... Um, mis um, I like misdirecting them. I like, I like, I like it to be an interactive experience. And I think if you've written something that a reader already knows and recognises completely, then you don't get that. You don't get that free song of of writing something that's interactive in a way. That's brilliant. Well, that's a great place to end. Appreciate you giving us your time, um, and uh, good luck with all the projects coming up as well. Thanks so much, Wayne. And um, yeah, keep me posted. I'm, I'm, I'm always interested in what you're doing. So I appreciate that. That's great, Melanie. Thanks a lot. And uh, speak to you again soon.
So there you go. Thanks again to Melanie. Such a great guest and a brilliant writer. You really should go and check out her back catalogue as well as the new book, Give Me the Child. So before I leave you, I wanted to say thanks for the extra iTunes reviews we've had and I'll single out Ben Harris and Matt Holt for the lovely feedback they left in particular and remind you that I do put out this show purely for the love of it. So any help you can give me to help others to find the podcast is greatly appreciated. I also love to get feedback, good, bad or indifferent. So you can tweet me at ju podcast or mr kelly to you and tell me what you think that includes the type of guests we have on my interview style the intro the outro of the show format length and anything else you want to comment on i just want to keep improving the show and helping more writers and readers connect and develop alternatively leave a comment at joinedupwriting.co.uk or follow us on facebook right that's enough inane chit chat as biff from back to the future says make like a tree and get out of here happy writing and reading and i'll see you next time joined up 